But oh, that's a beautiful integral. Oh, goodness, you are. On rare occasions, I'm actually writing perfect on this blackboard. On rare occasions, all because of Hagoro Machak. Thank you, Hagoro Machak. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Oh. I don't even know if you can understand me properly. It probably hit my microphone. So, we got neck gaiters. Most of you don't know about this one at my shop. You can find the link down there at top of the description. I'm wearing those each and every day at the moment due to Rona Chan. So if you are interested to get something that looks a little bit more fancy than your regular mouth guard, then make sure to get yourself a neck gaiter by Papa Flemmy. Now my dog was moving. Other than that, welcome back to another video. We are going to talk about this generalization yet again and like I said previously, we are going to talk about a few applications and a few really, really, really interesting cases because this identity is extremely powerful. It's like it's like really powerful. With it you are going to get infinitely many integrals and some of those are considered to be really hard by most mathematicians and, and other people out there. So it's kind of exciting. Also make sure to subscribe to Flammable Maths to the new um, basic mathematics channel. The first videos are already out on this channel so make sure to check out this bilingual channel and subscribe if you are into um, basic mathematics, high school mathematics and maybe later um, like a little bit of early high mathematics. Okay so we are going to dive into this right here. At first you are going to find a pdf down there at the top of the description where a subscriber of mine, thank you Tom, um, actually figured out the substitution and, uh, and, and the contour in the complex plane that I talked about while deriving this integral. Okay, I just said that you have to do complex analysis. You can find a full paper down there. He did a great job and he was using basically the same approach as I presented in the video, just with a different angle. What he did was he chose a contour that looked like this, okay, like a piece of pie basically with a certain angle beta in here and beta has to do with the inverse tangent. So um, beta is nothing but, uh, uh, let me think, the inverse tangent of negative s over t over alpha. So this just stems from what we already motivated with the Fresnel integral, what I said in the video. Speaking of Fresnel integrals, we are going to dive into the real shit, okay? This is really exciting. There are so many cool special cases that come along with this identity and if I ever get around writing a book at some point and, and it's going to be about in integralize maybe, we don't know yet, then this thing is going to land in there because it's just so fantastic. Now let us recap. We had some alpha which is of even positive order for now, for, for now, even positive order. Also we have t being element of r plus, so the positive reals with zero. It can approach zero. This is the really interesting case, okay? And s can be something, element of the real numbers. Now we are going to go ahead and let t go to zero. And this is where everything becomes really interesting, okay? Now for the limit. Oh, hello kitty caddies. Nice to see you here for the limit as t approaches zero of i, okay, i is our integral of s and t, okay, and also alpha, okay, it's like triple parameterized. Also you can try and differentiate this thing, maybe something nice is going to pop out, maybe a new class of integrals, we don't know. <laughs> if we take the limit as t approaches zero, what is going to end up with? Let us start with the left hand side, Let, let's just assume that we can simply take the limit as t approaches zero, so, so we can drag the limit into here. This should work because uh, this right here is an entire function. It should also, um, since it's just a complex exponential, um, con converge uniformly in the whole complex plane. So um, it should work out to drag the limit into here. Correct me if I'm wrong. But we are just going to do so. Okay, applied mathematics. This is an, this is an applied video here. When t approaches zero, this exponential goes to one and we are going to be left with the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the cosine of this stuff, okay? Let us write it out. This is going to be 
the integral over the whole real numbers. Oh, that's a beautiful integral. Oh, goodness. You are, you are magnificent. You have been blessed in Tegaral. Mm. On rare occasions, I'm actually writing perfect on this blackboard. On rare occasions, all because of Hagoromo Chak. Thank you, Hagoromo Chak. Now, um, this is nothing but the Tegaral over the whole of R of the cosine of S times X to the alpha integrated with respect to X. Now, we're also going to take the limit as t approach to zero on this side, okay? Now, if t approach to zero on this side, then, well, this is going to be easy. This is 2 over s squared to the 1 over 2a. The 2 and 1 half is going to cancel out. So this is going to give us 2 over s to the 1 over alpha. So the alpha root of s. Also, the, the gamma function is going to stay how it is. Gamma of 1 plus 1 over alpha times. Okay, if t approaches zero, then our, uh, you, you can track it into here because they are con continuous on the interval, okay, that, that we want, so, so on zero, or close to being zero, they are continuous, so you can track limits into here. So inverse tangent of infinity on the principal branch, we are only talking about the principal branch, is going to be, well, when does it explode to infinity? At, at pi over two. So this makes the cosine of pi over two alpha, okay, times the cosine of pi over 2 alpha. And now it's simplified really, really nicely. And do you know what the craziest thing is? Some weird math magic is happening while you're taking the limit as t approaches zero. Cosine in itself is an even function. It doesn't matter if you have an odd alpha here, for example, alpha being equal to seven, okay, best prime number this, or 57, this is the best prime number, not gonna lie. Meaning, by using this change of variable, taking t being equal to zero, we actually get rid of this condition that alpha can only be of um, even order. We are getting rid of this. It just happens because cosine is an even function at the start, we had a problem that, well, this function was neither odd nor even. We could only make it even if alpha would be of even order. This is what we did and thus everything converged. But now we got rid of this condition, meaning we need to add one new thing to here. Okay, S is just element of R yet again, but we now have a situation that alpha is actually element of the whole of N without zero. If it were zero, then this whole thing would diverge, okay? This is interesting. This is really interesting, okay? Now, there are some special cases that you can extract from this. For example, if you said S being equal to one and alpha being equal to two, let's, let's talk about this for a second. Now, for S being equal to one and alpha being equal to two, well, we are going to get the integral or, uh, over the whole of R of the cosine of x squared dx, and this is famously known as one of the um, Fresnel integrals. We have covered this before. And this solution to the Fresnel integrals actually is now my favorite one. Not even Feynman integration that I did before can, can really go against this method. It's just way more amazing, to be honest. So this is going to end up with, okay, s is equal to one. This is good. Okay, we are going to get rid of this. Also, we are going to get gamma, of one plus one half. This is going to be um, three over two, gamma of three over two, times two, the two that we have here, times the cosine of pi over four. Cosine of pi over four is exactly the intersection point of the cosine and the sine is one over square root of two. Okay, this is one over square root of two. Also, gamma of 3 over 2, um, we have rewritten this thing equivalently as 1 over alpha times gamma of 1 over alpha, is nothing but um, 1 half times gamma of 1 half. 1 half and 2 is going to cancel out. Gamma of 1 half is square root of pi. And there we go, Fresnel integrals, done. One of many Fresnel integrals. Those are the generalized Fresnel integrals, basically, that we are going to extract from this special identity. And now you can also calculate the, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the cosine of x to the 100 second power, 102 power. 
and it would work out. This is absolutely amazing, okay? And like I said before, it does hold for, um, yeah, even odd, for, it does even hold for odd um, numbers of alpha. I'm, I'm really excited about this because this is just so cool, in my opinion. Now, this is one really interesting special case, but we also have another special case. And this one being when s is equal to zero. <clears throat> when s goes to zero, well, our cosine goes to one and we are going to be left with something really interesting that I have derived before in this channel. So for s being equal to zero, we are going to have the integral over the whole of r of e to the negative t x to the alpha integrated with respect to x. If s goes to zero, same argument as before, we are going to get 2 over t. Gamma of 1 plus 1 over alpha. And then inverse tension of zero is going to be zero, so this whole thing is going to be one. Meaning overall, what we have here is the solution to the generalized Gaussian integral. We don't get rid of the, of the condition that alpha must be of even order just because it wouldn't converge otherwise, okay? Um, I'm not certain if it would converge if we would have the bounds from zero to infinity. I'm not certain about it, but I think it would still diverge because this thing is just um, growing all the time. I'm not certain about it. Um, please let me know down there in the comments. Maybe use some Desmos graph and, and give me some insights. But other than that, this is the solution to generalized Gaussian integral. I have actually made a video on that before. Um, I have derived it in its uh, full glory using the definition of the gamma function is actually quite easy. But yeah, this is basically it. Those are some spicy special cases that we can extract from this absolutely amazing, fabulous identity. And yeah, th there are many other things, okay? So for example, the, the one that we had before that I had presented before my channel, where we get a one here, t being equal to one and s being equal to two, then you get this pi phi five integral. So, so the solution to this thing would then be the, the square root of um, pi times phi over five. So this is really weird, pi phi five, five, okay? <laughs> So yeah, this is also one solution. You can plug everything into here that you want as long as it um, really goes by those conditions that we have given. And I hope you did enjoy this little video. This is really exciting to me because it's just so beautiful and you get so many really nice solutions to integrals out of that. And it's just so amazing. This is why I love mathematics. It's just crazy. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel if like. Don't forget if you still need a mouth guard in some way against Rona-chan, make sure to get yourself the neck gate and I'll land on the floor. And other than that, subscribe to Flammable Maths too. And I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Einen zündlichen Tag. See ya.